Hello there everyone, this is Mark 3 and welcome back to From the Depths. We are in the vehicle designer because there is a severe need, or I have a hunger for science! Yes, science! Mm. <laughs> science! Okay, um, as a fast note, this craft is still in construction, it still needs like another session or so on it so it's not quite there yet but it's really close um so yeah the interior work still needs doing uh, there's a bit of decoration that still needs doing so it, it, it's, it's, the, it's there it's doing good things right now but this is the first craft in the line that i'm calling the primordial fleet started by the four keys which is uh, shown on my channel a, few, uh, a week or so back. Uh, about two weeks now, I think. This is the first of its progeny. I am still planning on fixing the four keys as well, and this craft has actually given me some extra tricks to try and do that. But I said there was a need for science. And that's because some questions were asked about its speed. If this thing is going... circling something... Um, and it's in relatively calm water. It does like it does almost 30 meters per second, and it does that without using any engine power whatsoever. Damage's first reaction was um, seems a bit OP, and I'll be honest, you would think that, but it's a bit of an investment to get it to this point because it's big, the, it's bulky. I'm talking about the paddlers, by the way, not the boat. The boat itself is actually not that big, nor that massive, which is one of the reasons why I'm testing this. And right now it's not hitting its full speed because it is actually turning, and this is its turning circle. It actually turns really well. <laughs> but uh, that's um, a general design quirk and nothing to do with the paddle wheels, to be honest. But uh, yeah. The Forky's got me set on investigating paddle wheels a bit. So. They're actually pretty neat. I do like them, though they have their drawbacks as well and that's one of the things we're doing we're testing them so that's why we're here oh and as a fast note i i i i, I know you people i know you people that play from the depths you're here to steal my technology oh, i know you are well you can't have it this is my technology mine end of video no go away no <laughs> or not um, no, it's fine. If you see anything you feel like using from this video, go ahead and uh, nick it or whatever. I mean, as part of this, I will be showing exactly how I've built the paddle wheels, which I don't think I actually... Well, I, I, told, I mentioned it on the Forkies video, but I'll actually be rebuilding a paddle wheel in this one, so you'll get to see it first hand. It's a little finicky, but it's fine. It's a secret. It involves spin blocks. Um, Oh, test vehicle, I want you to actually wander off for a little bit. Uh, I need to get moving now. Out here. I can get over there. And then just moving come now. back again. <clears throat> so we get to see it in straight line mode. <clears throat> I mentioned this is my own technology. Because I'm actually 99% sure this is my technology. I actually searched through the Steam Workshop and I have found no signs of paddle sheet paddle wheel ships that are built in this way so the secret of spin block on spin block is mine <laughs> i use it to destroy you all or not as i said it does have some limitations um but all the paddle wheel ships i was able to find on the steam workshop use the deep water guard style which is the original intended which is like one spin block so it's got four paddles i mean I built it this way for aesthetics, uh, just because I wanted a, a denser looking paddle wheel. I was, I'd have honestly accepted it on the four keys if it didn't actually help the propulsion, but it turned out it did. So, you know, hmm. top speed has dropped from 29 to 28. It seems in a straight line because it's um, because I improved the turning capability. Yeah, I'll tr I'll trade a meter per second for massive improvement in turning force. That's fine. <laughs> I don't mind. Um, but yeah, this is 
this style of building a paddle wheels, if anyone else has actually done it, they've not actually put it on the workshop as far as I can tell, so this is my baby. There are other things that I have um, been able to claim are mine. Um, the missile stacking approach is mine, but this is mine as well. The tactical warp drive blinking every like second to avoid a fire thing, I'm fairly sure that's not mine, but I think I might be the one of the first one to actually try and do a, a, some video content on it, but this is mine. My paddle wheels, mine. Mm. But, uh, alas, we are here to investigate the function of these things. Because there are some things that I want answered. So, first off, a quick test on this, my control vehicle. It's really easy to do. Again, forgive the mess of the internals. I don't mind the rocket pods. Um, all the mess of the interior. And that is that I want to find the ACP control grid for the paddle wheels, which is down here. Right. Yeah, here's the first thing. These things are only running at like 21 per second. So this thing isn't even going full power yet. Oh, it's already back in place. Okay. Uh, right, I'll tell you to go out and Receiving. do another little trip, please. Moving now. And then come back Moving again, please. Now. And this time I'm going to actually crank it up to full power. Well, full power as far as this vehicle's concerned. We're going to get to that in a moment. That's one of the tests I want to do. So. Oh, propulsion running at 20. One, I'm going to crank you up to full speed and let's see what happens. It's at 21 just because you get to see the thing going forward. If you do it full power, it goes backwards like that, so it's like, yeah. And I'm wondering if this is going to do any kind of difference to it. Not really. That tells me this craft is kind of approaching its performance limits when it hits that. I mean, if you, if you look at it with the extra force, seems to be trying to push the nose downwards, but in fact we've also got rough seas going on right now as well. Oh, cool, there is a way to change that. Yeah, I don't like how it looks like the wheels are going backwards when you crack them up to full power like that. Options, environment. There you go, locked into that. And yeah, the craft is struggling to fully pitch compensate itself. But it has increased speed slightly to 30, 31, 32. So an extra th an extra 30% on the speed on these things is not helping. This craft is actually about at its design limit. Oh, another foot in the back. So I did actually drop it slightly into the water, so that's affected its speed as well. Hang on, let me just correct that. Uh, PID, where are you? PID, right. Uh, I'll set you to a, a... Let's be generous, I'll set you to 5. Mm, not done anything Yeah, The craft is struggling to keep its pitch stable. Yeah, it's definitely struggling to keep its pitch stable. Okay, let's go ahead and go down here. Yeah, this is one of the big secrets of the design. It's... It uses rudders. Ooh. How scandalous! It uses rudders, one of the oldest technologies in the game. It's very, very useful though. Let's just set you to... I don't want you, you yawing. I want you on pitch down. So I pitch up, I mean. Same for you. straighten it up because I was messing around with the forces. That's one of the drawbacks of the rudders. They are very powerful, but they apply so much force. It's very handy. In fact, yeah, that just having those extra rudders there is destabilizing the craft completely. <laughs> it's like... Hmm. Maybe because I've not counterbalanced it yet. Okay, let's see. I know this is not quite... I don't like how if you press E it sometimes forgets that you're on a menu. You have to go back to the thing. It's a bit of a drawback that. But these guys are also going to be on pitch duty.
But yeah, the boat is getting a bit confused now on that. It does have active roll stabilization in the form of that, but it seems like the additional rudders is causing it some problems. Still doing the same. Okay. Yeah, it might need some extra. Oh, it's because I'm interfering with... Me, I know what I'm doing. I'm not new at this at all. <laughs> That's the other reason I'm, I want to do the experiments I'm doing this video. It's like, um, oh, that's why. There we go. Of course, I was inverting half the church trying to. <laughs> <laughs> really, boat? Okay, I think that pitch is definitely set too aggressively now. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh dear. Right, yeah, it was set at 20, but I didn't realise that I, I was actually not letting it do it, so... <laughs> right. Five. There you go. You silly machine. I did say this video was about science, after all, but... Um, yeah, it seems like I want to include a rudder version of pitch control too. Right. Moving now. Moving go out and come back again. Turning's fine. Of course, adding those extra rudders will reduce the speed. <laughs> That'll actually look a bit silly with its nose out of the water like that. And actually, because they're so aggressive, they've cut the speed down. <laughs> yeah, I think they are. It's definitely lost speed. Oof. Now, let, let, let that be a lesson to you. Um, using rudders for pitch and your control is a great little trick. Again, I'm just not, it might be one that's new to me. I've not really seen people try and do it, but uh, it adds a lot of drag to the vehicles as well, so you need enough raw power to overcome it. But yeah, there we go. Uh, flattening it slightly. Really isn't doing anything much to help. Keeping pitch stable seems to be best, and letting it just go ham. It's doing like 32. So yeah, that was a good bit of experimenting. It was kind of kind of interesting. Let's see if I pump the sitting height a little bit higher. It's actually lost a little bit of speed due to the added drag of it trying to lift the vehicle up out of the water. Oh, no, no, I'm just doing about the same. <laughs> okay, right, that's, yeah, that's not messing around with the control ship. So, accelerating spin blocks to 30. And uh, let's this craft do like 30, 31, and then the mucking around with the rudders was interesting, but didn't really achieve anything extra on this design. If the craft was f built with that in mind, Probably be good, but uh, right back to here. Boop. I think I did something I didn't want to do because I want to teleport. Yeah, pull them out of play. Receiving. Okay. Right, that was the quote-unquote control ship. Which I'm now going to pull out because, yeah. Though, even though I've changed it a bit. So, moving on. Moving on. As you can see, we've got two more test subjects here. And we've got two experiments I want to do. First off is, what happens if we try power boosting it? I mean, um... I guess technically this would be the control one now because that one's got the extra pitch control to help it better apply extra power. So I guess let's change that. The other control version. And you are the. Uh, uh, what, what, what was the thing? What was the term? Super. Yeah, I'm just doing something random now.
this is a Super Deluxe Engine Upgrade version because, uh, yeah, I've already upgraded the Spin Blocks to get 32, one, to get 32 33 max speed out of it. But now I'm going to bolt a steam engine in the back and provide power to the spin blocks and we'll see what that does to it. See if that actually improves it further. Oh boy. Okay. I will be time lapsing a little bit here. And I'll be time lapsing on the final version as well, which will be experimenting with placing the paddle. So, here we go. Okay, uh, there we go. I have done a thing to it. <clears throat> uh, you saw me mucking around a little bit in there as well. I was experimenting a tiny bit. Um, because I was curious a little bit about the engines. I've not really tried installing like um, the step down, step up things. And I'm disappointed to note that the shaft systems currently seems to be faulty. As in there's only one input and output. You can't use them either way around. And I'm also not sure the purpose of the uh, step up slash step down size things are either. <coughs> you saw me mucking around a little bit with that, but yeah. Anyway, really simple conversion. We've got a big beefy boiler and piston set in here. So this thing is actually got a lot of power available to it. So I think 156,000 raw power stored in this gear assembly. We should be fine. <laughs> right. uh, um, I've also of note, by the way, is um, someone said in the Discord, and that's one of the reasons why I'm testing this, is that this craft is why it's super laggy because it's a big, it's a spin block paddle steamer. Um, the four keys had some other issues contributing to the lag. A fair few, which um, I have been steadily fixing on that design actually. So. The lag has been greatly reduced on the four keys, and I have seen no lag from this design at all. Except maybe when it's about to crash into something. But when this thing's running around by itself, no lag, uh, as far as I can tell. But if it is going to lag just in normal operation, I think it's going to be this one, considering we've got uh, maximum spin speed and we've got maximum power assist on the rotor plates. So let's see what this thing actually does. A bit of lag as it gets into the water, and then... Yep, seems to be just perfectly fine. Yeah. It's just when it's near other things. Because it's, it's trying to work out potential collisions, and it's simulating things more accurately, so I think that's why the game does that. But yeah, off it goes. Seems to be quite happy and hearty so far. Teleport to it, and we are doing... The same. Okay, um... Power boost on this spin box paddle set is doing nothing for the speed. Hmm. Interesting, actually. Um, I mean, if you look at the steam assembly, we are using like 12,000 power on these rotors, so... You'd think you'd be getting more, but no, it seems like the design is actually being limited by its maximum potential on the whole shape in part, and be the drag from its uh, stabilization system underneath in the form of those rudder sets. But it's going fine. It's um, 
In fact, I think it's actually, yeah. It was dipping a little bit low there, but... Ooh, 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 we hit 34. That's a new record. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, we are definitely hitting a design limit here. Um, either that or the physical speed limits on the paddles themselves, and I don't know if there is one, actually. Let's check. Um, water, large runners, does it say anything about a speed limit on them? <laughs> Paddles. Again, doesn't say anything about a speed limit on them. Well, huge props have a top speed of 100. Actually, that's, that's higher than it used to be, I think. Ah, well, the more you know. That's what this is all about, science. So, yeah, confirmed. Um, Power boosting these things, not helping, I suspect, because they're already really big and they're pushing this design to its limits as it is. I will note that um, probably if I power boosted paddle wheels, I could build them smaller. But that would lose part of the look of the thing. And it's an interesting thing, actually, building a ship that's this capable without needing engine power to actually run it. But that said, it is still like... Uh, you still have to pay for that choice by making some pretty big weak spots on it. Ooh. Yeah, it still loses like um, two or three meters per second in its corners. <laughs> so yeah, power boosting does nothing for this. Probably allow me to build smaller paddles if I was so inclined. But... Part of, the pro part, of the, part of the aesthetic of building a paddle steam type ship is you have a big paddle to more efficiently transfer the force. At least that's the way I understand it. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can come back here. I don't want you wandering around out there. And I think I'll kill off your engine too, actually. It is all the way over there. Build on it. So, yeah. Power boosting this design did absolutely nothing. And I'll just tear out the gearbox. Dink. There we go. Right, okay. Onwards to the next one, which is... Rebuilding the paddle wheels on this one here. Right, why am I doing this one? Um, I got some information on the Discord from Yar the Bug. Thank you, Yar, by the way. And... I have no reason to believe he's wrong in any way, because, you know, I'm new to this whole um, working with paddle wheels thing. I mean, before the forkies, I never even looked at it, really. I'm just going to figure out where exactly the uh, mimics blocks are on this thing. This is, by the way, a direct copy of the thing from... Another round is. Yeah, this is a direct copy from the paddle wheels over on the boat, as you can see. This is the core block of it, as in what you have on a single. Where are they? Oh, there's one. Yeah, this is what you have on a single uh, spin block. Right. So my plan is here. I'm going to strip it down, replace it with paddles. And that's because Yarbug said that um, um, Yarbug, correct, sorry, not, not Yarbug, sorry, my apologies, Yarbug. Uh, Chaz, <laughs> I was saying the wrong name, darn it. Oh, there they are. Oh god. Right, Chaz correctly identified how this was built because normal was a bit confused and I was sleeping at the time. Uh, I use spin block large rudders instead of paddles, as they each add a fraction of the vehicle's mass in its force. I have a ridiculous amount of force. Potentially true. Uh, I'm, that, would, that explains why rudders can be so effective on a larger ship and roll them over quite easily. I didn't know that large ones work that way, but I think the large ones don't work as much that way, if that's how they work. Because they apply force per block, so I'd be surprised if they did that. And I thought, honestly, I found it much harder to turn with a large rudder than a small rudder. So, I think small rudders are absolutely broken in that regard, but hey ho. Moving on. Um, quite lucky for its, probably quite lucky for its size, maybe, but as I said, 
I didn't really see much lag at all with that thing, so. But the purpose here is to replace the paddles. Oh, I can't because it's not a. Really? I'm going to have to copy this onto a boat because while I can build the large rudders on a state fortress, I can't build the paddles. Boo! Zero out of ten. Don't play this game. Ugh, I'll have to copy this onto the thing. Anyway, yeah, here we go. Let's just get started. Okay, there they go. Right. Now then. So, this is the engine housing, as you can see. And we are going to be building our new paddle on here. So, this is tedious more than anything else, but it's not that bad, honestly. It's, you can do it fairly quickly. So, we build the one. This one is going to be in... Actually, I'll leave it on rotating mode at the moment. Uh, then we get prefab... The prefab is built specifically with a hole in it, by the way, to, for ease of uh, construction because of that. It's also the overlapping, I know there's a little bit of metal block overlapping in this, well, block in general. That's because of the structure of the thing and it also helps protect it a little bit, but honestly, the large paddles, sorry, large paddles, the large rudders are so fragile, it doesn't really matter much. They, they get blown off by, I think even like the simple weapon Gatling cannon could shred a paddle really quickly. So, you know, yeah, they aren't exactly well reinforced, no matter what you do. It's one of the drawbacks of using them. Right, uh, that is facing upwards, yes. So now we do this. Because I'm using a 16 blade paddle, I am setting the angle control to 22.5 for each one. So copy that just to make it a little bit easier on myself. So, and then we prefab it. And this is why I pre-built the central piece with a hole in it to house all of those. I may be, I, I may be spin block stacking metal blocks around the rotors themselves. Sorry, the spin blocks themselves, I can call them rotors. But, I haven't done that on the central block because that can get in the way of easy placement of the thing. So it's easier if you just like have a hollow built in ready for however many spin blocks you want to put in. So, new spin block, facing upwards, angle control. Important note, don't have an ACB set to universal range doing things to angles on spin blocks if you've got one of these things because it'll reset all the stuff in the paddles. So, you know, it's that's something to be aware of, actually. Oh, dear. Oh, look at this thing. It looks like it should be in a grape yard or something. <laughs> right, moving on. Last spin block. Easy as pie. Just have to find the spin block. I've actually lost the spin block. Oops. Oh, it's in the... Yeah, no, no. Right. Pasted. Angles. Prefab and here we go. Right, so this is the uh, Deepwater Guard style paddle block and the style that I found on the few paddle boats I came across on the workshop as well, which is why I think that the um, the spin block stacked paddle wheel is something new by me. My technology, patient pending, don't steer. Yeah, copyright, copyright, copyright. Mine. No, if you want to use this technique, go right ahead. You have my blessing. That's one of the things about Formula Depths, isn't it? It's like, um, yeah, we 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 learn from each other. We inspire each other. So if you want to use these paddle wheels for anything, go ahead. I don't mind. It's in the slightest. Besides, I think this does look a lot more interesting than the ones that Deepwater Guard has. Like just the four paddles. You, you, want, you need more paddles on a good-looking paddle steamer. The fact they work is a bonus. Right. 
the first spin block, we need to be up back onto this one. I'm going to go and set this one to continuous mode. And it's got stuck because collision is slightly different on the paddles compared to the... I was afraid of this. Because I... The, the large paddles, the reason I use large paddles rather than the, sorry, large paddles, large spin blocks rather than the, these paddle blocks is because they, I could get a much more interesting shape. Though it seems like using the half blocks and things is giving me slightly different collisions around the area as well. So we're going to have to fix this. Save, uh, temp. We want to get one of these on the other side as well. Just mount it straight onto the housing where it's meant to be, and oh, it stopped as well. Right, so yeah, we just have to do a very quick bit of fixing and strip out some of the housing around these because they are slightly bigger than the uh, regular ones. Also, we have to tell this one to go in reverse because it's on the other side of the ship. Before I forget. There we go. Right, so now it's a block hunt. What is stopping these things? I think it's probably these things down here, actually. I was going to time skip there, but that was actually really quick. Yeah, it was just like really at the bottom where the tolerances were so tight on it. Up top, there was enough space, so it was fine. So yeah, there we go. We have now have, for our last test, a original version of this ship set up with the basic paddle blocks rather than the large rudder blocks. Because Chaz said that um, large rudders add a fraction of the vehicle's mass. Uh, so this thing is not actually very massive. It is, um, where's the mass? Weight is only 196. It was 200,000. So um, installing the paddles instead of the uh, instead of the uh, rudders has actually given it a bit of a diet course. So it's lost a little weight from that. But um, yeah, the weight chance set it up. He's using spin blocks. Spin blocks large rudders instead of paddles as they each add a fraction of the vehicle's mass as force. And he has a ridiculous amount. I don't think I have a ridiculous amount, honestly. Well, actually, I probably do, because these are... Compared to the boat, these are a big paddle, actually. But this thing's meant to be like a steampunky style ship. It's not meant to be like a realistic one, so, you know, that's fine. It actually looks better, I think, with the big paddle. It's, like, really obvious what it's trying to do. So, now we need to get this one out into the water and test it. Receiving. So... The only lag spike I really notice with these things is when it's near these guys being dropped into the water. So let's go ahead and release and see what's going on. Less lag, definitely. Okay, it's turning really hard, so that's giving me a slight error in the speed thing. And if I leave it like that, it's going to come back around and crash. So I need to get it to moving. Uh, speed loss is not actually that high. In fact, the nose is sticking out of the water a bit better because I think because there's less force involved. So yeah, force is definitely a factor, but uh, speed on this design seems to mostly be limited by the hull shape. Eh, still doing 23. It's only, like, it's only like five meters per second slower. So there may be a lot of force, but the ship's hull limits it. Which is interesting to note, if I built a speedboat with uh, the large paddle designs, it could probably go like the clappers. Who knows how fast that thing could go. I, I much prefer the look of the large paddles though. <laughs> and as a note, by the way, um, if you look, most of the time there's only a couple of the um, actual paddle box in the water. <laughs> so. oh dear. Um, hang on, where's the... I wanted the pitch control, let's reduce that to zero, see if that increases the speed slightly, like one meter per second ish, it's fine. The pitch was actually intended to keep those that window set slightly out of the water, 
And yes, um, this thing has bone pens on it, just like the four piece does. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, swapping out the large rudders for the paddles, minus four meters per second, roughly. Four, four to five meters per second lost, which is like uh, about one in six as far as its speed is concerned. Not that big, so yeah. Seems like it seems like there's not really much difference, honestly. Uh, there might be more difference actually if we increase the propulsion on it. So let's crank up the wheels to full speed, which again makes them go backwards, and I think that doesn't look really good. And suddenly it's doing the same speeds. It, I saw it hit 29 there, but it's, now it's doing a hard turn. Uh, seems to be struggling. Yeah, struggling a bit with the torque on those things. So, yes, yeah, mind you, this thing was built with 21. Struggling a bit with torque, but yes, now it's hitting 28, so same kind of speed with the paddle blocks rather than the large rudders. So that means paddles might be doing something similar. I also force dark, I'm like, that looks about the same as large paddles. <laughs> Sorry, the large, yeah, large, large paddles, large rudders. Looks pretty similar, that. But I, I don't really like how it looks like going backwards, so yeah. There is more force on the large uh, rudders, but paddles can do the same kind of thing, so... Ugh. Beats me. Oh well. That's fine, I'll just go ahead and grab it back. So yeah, that is the science of this video sorted. I was curious about it and I wanted to learn a little bit and I figured, you know, I'd do some content on it as well. Get a little bit more FTD video out there. And... Yeah, I learned a little bit, but, um, yeah. This design is actually mainly limited by its own shaping. Rather than anything else. You know, there's one last curiosity. 4 piece B which is the version I've been tinkering around with, I believe. I am planning to finish this, but... Um, you know the whole applies force proportional to size of vehicle thing? Forkies in the tournament was doing 16. That's because it had a speed limit to install. <laughs> So now the question is, how fast will it go if I remove the speed limiter and crank up the paddle wheels to max? Because, yeah, if you look, different design on the side paddles, reducing the lag on it. If I release the supporting scout, it will lag some more as well. Uh, unlike that little craft, which maintains one RPM on the rotors just to let it stay a little bit more stable when it's parking, because this is a little bit more stable than the four keys. I, I know it's hard to believe, but it is happening. But yeah, let's crank the four keys up to full power and just let it loose and see what happens. Command us forward, converts to full power. That's those two. So yeah, I actually there was a remember there's a big bulkhead there before. That's that was a space that was being taken up by the fact I slanted those things. Yeah, I know it's hard to be more stable than this, but somehow the smaller ship manages it because it doesn't have a massive keel underneath it, so just have to find the ACB set, which is in here somewhere. Here it is. Right. Uh, you set your thing to full power forwards. And this is the, here's the speed brake. You, I'm going to turn off. <laughs> so now this thing has no speed limit on it. Let's see what it does. I don't like how it's turned just to face that. I'm going to pull those out of play, actually. There we go. Right. Four keys. Time for a speed test. How fast can you go? Moving now. Moving now. Again, I don't like how it looks. Like, I, I wish it didn't do that. Looking like it's going backwards. That's why it's, these things are running like a third capacity.
Full power, this thing is hitting. Yep, straight lining by itself, it's hitting like 21 meters per second. That's because there's a massive amount of drag coming in still because of the vehicle trying to control itself. So, so the steering paddles actually had a lot of drag to the full piece. That's why when Damas speed tested it when he first revealed it to the world, uh, it was beating the speed limit on the contest because he was using forward, so it stopped trying to steer because he overrode the AI. Now, if I, if I do that... Mm, straight line speed seems to be like 23. Yeah, 22 to 23 in calm, calm seas. So, yeah. That, that's what the four keys can do with its much greater bulk. And admittedly, it has a lot more paddles on it as well, but... Uh, doesn't seem to be as much of a problem as I insinuated from um, what Chaz said. Yes, it is definitely a thing that um, force is somewhat tied to mass, but it doesn't seem to be massively so, because this thing is way more massive than that, uh, but proportionally it has a fair bit less paddles in the water. And the force is also uneven as well, because the paddles are a bit lower. <laughs> so, they're not actually applying correctly either. Let's bring the force diagram. Force diagram seems to be a bit confused actually. It's not, it's not showing any force on the path. Oh wait, yeah, there we go. Yeah, there, there is actually less force on this thing, I think. Oh wait, that's because the ship's just much bigger. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. But yeah, this is what the force looks like on this ship. <laughs> it looked a lot more wild and much harder to understand when the paddles were slanted. But yeah, there we go. Right, that's enough science on paddles. This video is done. I tested the design I wanted to, and I even gave the four keys a quick test as well, just to be sure. And it's all okay. So, yeah. I'm going to call the video there. Until next time, this has been Iron Mark 3. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the show and this little poking at paddles to see what the heck's going on with them. And I'll catch you all some other time. See you all later. And yes, I was deliberately trying to get these things spawned back in for the when I said goodbye, and it's like, uh, yeah, don't mind me, I'm just fumbling with the controls. <laughs> uh, bye. That's it. Video's over. <laughs>